It is a great honor to present to you today about Japan's strategy for economic growth. Uh, last December, we have a new government led by Prime Minister Abe, and this government has put the top priority on the economic policy to overcome the long-lasting deflation <coughs> shown in this chart. So I believe this is the very best timing to introduce what changes are taking place in economic policies in Japan. The main topic of my presentation is the economic policy by Abe government, so-called Abenomics, and the position of growth strategy in it. Prior to these main topics, I'd like to touch briefly on Japan's economic situation as a background to Abenomics. So what is the cause of the deflation in Japan? Many specialists believe that in the insufficient monetary loosening by Bank of Japan and excess appreciation of the yen are the main causes. Others emphasize structural or external environmental changes, such as a decline in population, fears, international competition, and an inflow of low price product from emerging market, emerging countries. I think deflation in Japan is very complicated in nature, so it is difficult to identify the specific cause. However, it is clear that private demand has been depressed since the debt bubble burst in Japan. I think the deflation in Japan is very complicated in nature, so it is difficult to identify the specific cause. However, it is clear that uh, private demand has been decreased, depressed since the debt bubble burst in Japan, and there have been no effective measures implemented so far. So please look at uh, the page four. As shown in this chart, the income distribution to the household sector, uh, indicated in blue line, has been declining. On the contrary, corporate income, indicated in green line, has increased. Actually, until early 2000, corporate sector had been over debt, so they were asked to postpone investment to repay debt. However, by the mid-2000s, overall corporate sector had already been released from the debt heavy debt repayment. However, they have been slow to invest in the domestic market. And they also have been slow to increase regular employment and to raise a regular payment. Uh, please look at slide five. This is a chart of saving investment balances by sector. And from this chart, you can identify the changes in saving investment balance of corporate sectors. Uh, that was a uh, blue colored bar. Uh, the changes is from excess investment to excess savings. And on the, uh, on the other hand, household savings uh, which has uh, indicated in the right blue bar, has been declined as a result of uh, depressed income distribution and an aging of society. And another salient feature is consistently high level of excess investment ratio of government. Many of you might know that Japan's government debt to nominal GDP ratio reached to an extremely high level in comparison with those to the other major industrialized countries uh, shown in the uh, slide of page six. Uh, this is the result that government playing a significant role in supporting economic activity and so being enabled to implement comprehensive fiscal reform despite being very concerned about the expansion of social security spending, <coughs> along with rapid aging of society. 
Uh, please look at uh, slide seven. Uh, in spite of such a significant deterioration <laughs> of fiscal situation, the yield of Japanese government bond, so-called JGB, has been kept at low levels up to now. This is also a result of prolonged deflation. Uh, there has been little private sector demand for money, so financial institutions has had to hold government bonds. In other words, such a stable environment for financing allows the government to postpone fiscal consolidation. Uh, please look at uh, slide eight. Uh, as shown in this chart, domestic investors hold more than 90% of JGP, JGB as end of March 20. 2012. Uh, such a stable hold, bond holding structure could be maintained because overall saving investment balance of Japan has been uh, excess savings. <coughs> In other words, Japan has been a current account surplus country. However, uh, Japan's current account surplus has started declining. Uh, please look at uh, slide nine. It will turn to negative around or before 2020, mainly due to a decline in savings of aging households. It implies that stable government bond holding structure is unsustainable in the medium term future. Japan must urgently implement a comprehensive economic reform to revert to a sustainable economic growth. <coughs> that is the background to abenomics. And please look at the slide 10. Uh, as mentioned, Mr. Yamada, abenomics is a three-pronged strategy, uh, namely uh, aggressive monetary policy, flexible fiscal policy, and the growth strategy. <coughs> And the degree that these three prongs have progressed up to now is different. So I will now discuss these three uh, one by one. Uh, please look at slide 11. Uh, in terms of an aggressive monetary policy, it has been launched. In this January, the government and the Bank of, Bi Bank of Japan released the joint st statement on overcoming deflation and achieving sustainable economic growth. As concrete measures, uh, BOJ decided to introduce 2% price stability target instead of 1% price stability goal and enhanced the asset purchase program. Uh, these aggressive monetary policy are not directly targeting at the exchange rate. However, uh, please look at uh, the slide 12. However, yen's exchange rate uh, depreciated so rapidly in these three months. The yen's depreciation reflects not only expectation of further monetary easing by BOJ, but also expansion of Japan's trade deficit a return of confidence in the euro area, and a retreat of concern over the US economy. For whichever reason, yen's depreciation so far contributed to improve the profit of economic export company. And please look at uh, slide 13. Uh, uh, this is a chart about a flexible fiscal policy. Uh, Abe government flexible fiscal policy has been initiated, but not concluded yet. This is the uh, outline of emergency economic measures. It has been decided by the cabinet in January, and total size of measures in three priority area is 10.3 <coughs> trillion yen. The government explains that its expected impact on real GDP will be approximately 2%. As far as fiscal year 2013, 
economic recovery will be supported by large-scale public works. However, it is impossible to maintain such a large economic stimulus package every year because budget restraint in Japan becomes so severe. Please look at slide 14. Uh, here is a chart of general government primary bonds in Japan. And uh, including the scheduled tax increased for a uh, twice consumption tax ratio uh, increase. The medium term fiscal target set in 2010 and aiming at primary surplus in fiscal year 2020 will not be achievable. In order to curb the risk of fiscal crisis, flexible fiscal policy must be based on reliable medium term fiscal target and comprehensive economic reform and social security and taxation systems. However, it is unfortunate that neither will be achieved before mid 2013. So I think flexible fiscal policy has not concluded yet. And the third prong of Abenomics, the growth strategy, has not been released yet. So Abenomics is still at an early stages. But uh, however, it has been very welcomed up to now. Uh, please look at that uh, slide 15. Uh, this is a chart about stock prices. There are some positive signs. Most explicit <coughs> signs is the remarkable surge in stock market shown in this chart, a red line. And slight and cautious improvement of expectation among private sector are observed. As I mentioned earlier, Japanese economy is expected to recover in the short term thanks to large-scale economic stimulus packages as well as the end depreciation. There are some movements among large export companies to reflect their profit increase in bonuses. However, economic growth and wage increases based on one-time effect is unsustainable. Household income increase based on more employment or higher productivity is required for sustainable economic growth. That is the aim of Japan's growth strategy. Please look at uh, slide 16. Uh, this is the economic policy making bodies of Abenomics. In Japan, uh, people's attention has been focused on what issues are discussed in these uh, economic policy making bodies of Abenomics. Concerning the growth strategy, headquarters for Japan's economic revitalization is scheduled to present the master plan in the media, middle of this year. Its decisions are expected to reflect the strategic goal set by the Industrial Competitive Council, a council of prime minister. And uh, please look at the uh, next page, uh, page 17. Uh, this is the list of urgent policy issues uh, made by headquarters up to now. One of the salient features is that regulatory reform is a top priority. I take a positive slant on the development of discussion so far because I believe that the basic foundation of Japan's growth strategies should be based on the regulatory reforms to promote the private sector activity. And there is some hope that the new growth strategy will be different from Japan's traditional approach of allocating public <coughs> money to a government selected priority sector and protecting it by regulation, which is no longer effective in increasing competitiveness. Creating a more business friendly environment is the only way to enhance the competitiveness of companies based in Japan. In other words, it is the only way to sustainable growth. In spite of such an importance, 
regulatory reforms are more difficult to implement and need more time in comparison with the monetary easing or fiscal stimulus package. Because as there is a conflict of interest, regulatory reforms has been blocked by strong lobby groups. Especially for this year, the election of House of Councillors is scheduled in Japan. So there is a risk of deceleration of regulatory reforms. It is indeed true that Japan needs a stable government. However, victory without sustainable growth strategy is unsustainable and meaningless. So I hope that the government should explain the necessity of reforms to voters <coughs> and express their strong commitment to achieving it before the election. <coughs> there is a significant possibility that such a stance will be welcomed by non-vested interests, which seem to outnumber the vested interests. Instead of final remarks, I would like to mention two policy areas where I have most interest among the urgent issues. The first is economic partnership. Uh, please look at slide 18. Here is the EPA FTA in Japan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Japan is far in behind the development of networking high level EPA and FTA so far. However, it is explicit that promoting, rev promoting high level economic partnership is crucial, not only for improving trade and investment environment but also accelerate inevitable but politically unpopular reforms. So I hope for the successful negotiation of Japan-EU EPA. And please look at uh, slide 19. This is a framework of multinational economic partnership in Japan. In Asia Pacific region, joining TPP would be one of the key to success of Abenomics, because Asia Pacific is such an important region for Japan for both business and security. It seems more and more likely that Japan will join the TPP negotiation after US-Japan summit last weekend. Successful TPP will have a positive effect on the other, economic, other regional economic partnerships such as the SIF, uh, which is an uh, uh, economic uh, partnership among ASEAN uh, 10 countries and six can plus six countries, or FTA among Japan, China, and Korea. Along with the decisions on the TPP, the government should accelerate the agricultural policy based on regulatory reforms. I believe transforming the agricultural industry from, in, from industry protected by high tariff to export-oriented industry is a effective, very effective solution. I also be, believe a positive stance for economic partnership for Japanese government will be welcomed internationally and alleviate the external concern about Japan's economic policy, such as currency or something like that. And second area is the youth and women's policy. Uh, please uh, look at the uh, slide 20. In Japan, uh, lifetime employment is still prevailing for the middle-aged workers. But the younger generation faces severe obstacles to find a regular full-time employment. Unemployment rate for the younger generation is relatively high in comparison with the other age groups shown in this chart. People without full-time jobs are less likely to marry. An unstable living condition of the younger generation is one of the causes of low fertility rate in Japan. On the other hand, an M-shaped curve still observed in the labor participation rate of female. Uh, please look at uh, the chart 12, 21. Uh, 
an M-shaped curve in Japan is because that many women are still urged to abandon their career as a result of an insufficient support for raising children. So there is a significant room for Japan to mitigate the decline in the labor force by boosting the participation of women. Actually, policy measures for the youth and women tend to be lagged behind because the senior is far more politically influential in an aging society. However, improving the environment for the youth and women will be effective not only to enhance the domestic demand, but also to help sustain Japan's population. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm very much looking forward to active discussion with you. Thank you very much.